All right. Uh, so now we have seen uh, one practical issue that often arises uh, with logistic regression or with um, linear regression, uh, confounding variables. So now we will look at an, another practical issue that arises with logistic regression, not with linear regression, because uh, as you will see, it is essential uh, that this is classification, not regression. So um, this is imbalanced data. So why does it happen and what are we going to deal about it? What are we going to do about it? So um, let's just look at our credit card default data set, right? So the vast majority of people there do not default, right? So the frequency of, of default is just about 3%, right? So which means that if we uh, are going to predict that everyone is not going to default, the error rate will be about 3%, 3.3%. Now, uh, let us fit our logistic regressions, right? So the, the first model uses just the, the student status as predictor. And as, as it happens is that they, um, the, this model just gives us the, the same thing as the, our simple uh, trivial baseline predictor. So it predicts that everyone is not going to default. Well, and the overall accuracy is 96.7%, which is pr pretty good, right? So the error rate is... Um, is pretty good. So, and the, the, these uh, the, these are predictions of the model of the more com complicated model. So that uses student status, balance, and income as as variables. So um, you see, the confusion matrix is, is now different, right? So the to find the overall accuracy, what we do is uh, we look at the diagonal of the, the this confusion matrix. So these are um, labels that are predicted correctly. Right, and we take the sum of the um, entries on the diagonal divided by the sum of all entries of the confusion matrix. So th this is going to be the overall accuracy. Now, um, it happens that the overall error rate of the simple model is 3.3%, and the overall error rate of the, this more complex model is 2.7%, which is just slightly, slightly better. But at the same time, of course, you know, the common sense is that the, the more complex model is, should be like much, much better. So, um, so what can we do about it, right? So uh, usually what people do, um, we instead of just looking at the overall accuracy rate, we, we try to uh, uh, to look at some other metrics, right? So I'm, I'm going to explain what the, these metrics are. So sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive uh, value, and negative predictive value. Um, right, so what are these? Now, uh, it, it happens that in R, so the positive class was, so the no class was identified as positive. So this is somewhat random. It doesn't really mean anything. So it's just that this function that produces confusion metrics, it just randomly identifies one of the two classes as positive, the other one is negative. So I, I didn't specify which is positive, which is negative. So um, the, the positive class is, is no, so the negative here is yes, right? So now the confusion matrix looks like this. So um, in the confusion matrix, it is a four by four table, uh, sorry, two by two by table. Um, so these are um, records that are actually no, and they are classified as no, right? So they are correctly classified as positive. So these, these are the so-called true positive. So these are true positive, right? Uh, now, these are records that are actually Yes, but they are classified as no, right? So, which is why they're called false positive, right? So, they are classified as positive, but it was incorrect. So, now these are records that are actually no, so then positive, but they are classified as yes, so that is as negative. So, they're false negative. And these records are for uh, true, true negative. Okay, so th this is the the kind of the the, the proper names for for these are, for the, these numbers are. Now, um, what is sensitivity, right? So, uh, sen and specificity. So specificity comes when uh, from considering the first column of the disconfusion matrix, right? So sensitivity is. Um, the number of true positives divided by the number of true positives plus the number of false negatives. 
So in other words, in sensitivity, what we have is that the actual label is positive. So the actual label is no, right? And sensitivity tells us if the actual label is no, what is going to be the probability that we will identify it as no? We will also predict it as no. So this is sensitivity. Now, the, the second column is specificity. So specificity is um, true negative divided by false positive plus true negative. This is specificity, right? So it comes from the second column of the confusion matrix. So in the second column of the confusion matrix, so the actual... Um, value is yes, so they have actually defaulted, all right? And specificity tells us what is the probability that um, those who are actually defaulted, we are going to predict them as, as defaulted. So this is specificity. So now let us look at the rows of the, this matrix. So the, the first of them is called the positive predictive value. So the positive predictive value is the number of true positives divided by the number of true positives plus uh, false positives. So in other words, uh, positive predictive value tells us the following. That, so if we predict that someone did not default, so what is the probability that they actually did not default? So this is the positive predictive value. Well, and you, you can, I guess, easily guess that the negative predictive value is um, uh, the true negative, the number of true negatives divided by the number of false negatives plus the number of true negatives, right? So in other words, the negative predictive value tells us that um, given that we predict that someone is going to default, so what is the probability that they actually default, right? Well, and finally, balanced accuracy here is just the average between sensitivity and specificity. As far as I remember, I think it's just the average of the two. I hope I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, so, um, what I'm trying to say here is that... Um, Sometimes some of these met metrics are, are more important than the overall accuracy. So for starters, if the data is imbalanced, we can all, always look at, at the balanced accuracy, right? So this is the average between um, sensitivity and specificity. So at least, you know, it, it's going to give you, so if one of them is, is very good, is near 100% and the other one is, is not very good, at least it's going to kind of um, tell us that this is, you know, probably not such a great model. So another thing that, that we can uh, really think about is which of these is, is actually the most important ones. And, um, you know, in this case, since the, this, these are credit cards, let's just imagine, imagine a situation. So, uh, so what is the cost of a mistake? So if someone, if we predict that someone is going to default, but they are not going to default, right? So... You know, if we predict that someone is going to default, so as a bank, so what is our course of action? So we are probably going to, I don't know, um, send some debt collectors there, uh, I don't know, try to get some restraining orders, probably pursue them to, to pay the debt or something like this. So if we believe that they are going to default, but they are not actually going to default, it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's probably inconvenience for them, but it, it's not really that big of a deal. So on the contrary, if um, they are going to, to default, but we do nothing about it, then as a bank, we may lose a lot of money, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, the cost of um, mispredicting uh, misclassifying yes as no is much higher than the cost of misclassifying no as, as yes. Right? So which means that for this problem, maybe we should pay more attention to specificity rather than to sensitivity, right? So which means that 
when specificity is 31%, it's not, it's not very good, right? At the same time, in the trivial model, if, if you think of the trivial model, so for the trivial model, uh, specificity is, is just uh, is just un undefined. So probably at, at least it, it is better to to have some 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 um, some reasonable number there. Uh, but still, it would be better to have higher specificity. Now, generally speaking, what can we do? So what can we do about um, imbalanced data, right? Um, so when data is imbalanced, and usually the, the, if the, this happens, then the cost of misclassifying yes is no is much higher than the cost of misclassifying no is yes, or vice versa, right? So the, 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 the two types of error are different. So we can change the loss function by just including the weights, or we can make several copies of yes examples in the training set. It's actually the same thing. So if you think about it, so the, these two options are, are exactly the same. Third option is different. So third option is to change the threshold for classifying as yes from 0 0.5 to, to a different number. All right, so by uh, lowering it down, if we lower it down to this threshold, so then of course um, the number of, the total number of records in this column is not going to change, right? So because these are true yes. But if we change it down, then some of those that are actually yes but classified as no are going to be actually classified as yes, right? So this is if we um, lower down the threshold. So maybe it will help. Okay, so that's all for today's lecture. So please take the last quiz because uh, before we uh, we are we do some overview of the lecture.